Hello everybody and welcome back for some more War Thunder tank action. Today, mostly with my spaded and talisman T-10M in my high tier Russian heavy tank slot. And I had a 75% personal research booster and a 10% team booster, so a total of 85% research boosters for me for this battle. To go along with my spaded and talisman, well mostly talisman, T-10M. So we got a nice domination map on jungle, which is always good to see when you've got a fully spaded out heavy that moves like a fast medium. And got a favorable spawn as well over by the C point. So pretty easy to make it to the uh, C point from here. In fact, I am going to come up and stop and wait at the point for the rest of the team, as you'll see, and end up waiting so long because nobody's coming that I end up just capping it on my own first anyways. but. We'll get to that in a moment. So, like I said, hurry to the C point. I'll wait for you guys, especially with the 10% team research booster. Might as well share it with everybody. But two guys are going way north along the edge of the beach by the water and not making an effort towards the C point, and the other three guys all stop to shoot at the enemy across the way. So, eventually, I decided, well, all right, I'm not gonna wait here until I get killed. There's, there's a point where I'm not going to sit and wait and share capture point with the team anymore. And that's when it's kind of obvious that nobody's coming to see, so push in to take it myself and then wait for a little bit of a enemy contact. Now somehow that RU-251 didn't take a fatal detonation from my APC BC round there, so that was kind of strange. But he didn't do any damage to me either, so it all worked out, I guess. It was just a little weird. So C point, well in hand and captured. I'm gonna reload my ammo, wait for a moment for the team to catch up, and then we're gonna push across and see what's going on over near the B point across the little water inlet here. do went up the valley there so push across the water and see what we can see there's definite enemy contact over by B because they're all over it and contact with my breach of course now thankfully I uh, pushed just to the side from that rocket uh, Panzer II there because he had a follow-up missile come right at me but thankfully since I had moved and twisted to the side he missed with his follow-up so I dropped a smoke round as slightly as a distractor I dropped the second one to give myself a nice extra wide, double wide smoke screen to hide behind while I repair so I'm less obvious for them to shoot into the middle of it. And then fired off my repair and then I'm gonna wait until I get repaired, watch the team moving up behind me, which they sort of are but not really, and see enemy tanks getting hit and destroyed right next to me on the other side of the smoke. So I was really glad I had smoke here. Breach repaired, let's push up over the top of the hill here and see what we can see. And oh, what a sight would be waiting for us up here. Just targets, targets and targets and targets. More targets than I could possibly deal with. So starting with the Rocket Panzer II, and then there's also a Tiger and a Leopard over there, as indicated in the thumbnail for this video. So they were oblivious to the destruction of the guy behind them and didn't hear or see me fire. So I backed off behind the hill to reload, push up again. Tiger is going to make it behind those rocks there before I have a real good shot at him, but the Leopard is slightly more dangerous, also immobilized, and also totally oblivious to me, so we'll deal with the Leopard because he's a bit more dangerous. Now I really would have liked to have gotten a shot into that Tiger, but by the time I could get reloaded and then back up out of position to shoot at him, he was both behind the rocks and a larger, much more dangerous target had presented itself in the form of the mouse up there. So yeah, going to deal with the mouse first. And for those of you who question why I bring heat FS and APDS shells with the T-10M, here comes the answer right here. Sometimes you need a little more penetration than the APC-BC offers. It's a pretty good all-around shell, but it is not a one-size-fits-all for every single situation. 
right here for this shot that I need, I need heat FS. And that's why I'm loading heat FS. And then of course an RU251 just comes driving out of nowhere, totally oblivious to me again. And I'm able to bag him with my heat FS round, which now that I didn't need heat FS for him, but I was loading it for the mouse and I wasn't about to not shoot the RU251. So reload another heat FS shell and then go for the mouse's breach and breaches if possible. Now the mouse, thankfully, is occupied with shooting at other people, which gives me plenty of time to get up here, aim, and put a shot right into his cheek armor. Didn't fully get his breach, but I took out his gunner and yellowed out his vertical cannon drive, which probably is going to make him push back and try to repair it. Now you'll notice over here a giant, what looks like a mold spore ball. That is the Tiger H1 dropping smoke down there, but he just got killed, so he's gone. So he's no longer an issue. Now the mouse, I would like to get around to the side on and maybe get a better shot at him, so I'm going to try pushing up over here, and then the mouse gets hit and taken out, and he's no longer a concern. So somebody's blasting away at something in the water over here, and sure enough, out around the corner comes a leopard. Easy enough. And there's my fourth kill. I don't remember why I had initially started loading the APDS there, but I stopped it and switched back to the APCBC because there wasn't really any good target for the, uh, it may have been to shoot at the mouse. I don't remember if I actually realized that the mouse was dead by this point or not. However, coming up over the hill, there is actually another tiger of all things, which was really surprising. So there was my fifth kill, and then you don't see tigers very often in high tier 8.0 tank battles, much less two of them, so that was pretty weird. But pretty easy kill with the APC BC for the fifth kill of the battle. And then on to my T-54-1951. Now this battle was the day after I had gotten the T-62, but I wanted to get my uh, BR-412D shells for the T-54-1951, so that's what I was researching this battle. I wanted to start out with the T-10M to make sure that I got enough score to bring my T-54-1951 into the battle to take advantage of the 85% research boost that I had, but I did so well with the T-10M that I ended up not even really getting much accomplished with the T-54-1951. But I guess that's a first world problem, sort of. So there's our team taking away the B point. And I'm no longer gonna head towards B. And we're gonna head towards A because there was supposedly somebody heading over towards it from the other team. So that's where we're going. doing down by our spawn, it's always a good idea to check and just make sure there isn't anybody from the other team hanging out camping there. And just as I get my turret swung around on the Steve 54 1951, or rather the Leopard up in front of me, he gets behind the rocks there, and so I'm trying to drive up to a position where I can see him, and he makes it up onto the A point, and then he just barely starts decapping it, and then he gets hit and destroyed. Just as I'm finally getting my non-stabilized gun right up on target, boom, he gets taken out. And so the A-point is no longer being captured, and I don't have the snowball's chance in hell of actually making it there in time to retake it for the team before the tickets run out, so that is going to be that for this battle. So I didn't really get anything done with the T-54-1951, but it was one of those cases where everything I was heading towards just kept getting d dealt with or taken out before I got to it. But still a pretty good battle with the T-10M. So for those of you who have been dying to see spaded tank battles, here's one for you. And as you can see, with the 85% research booster, got 5 kills and a capture, and that equaled out to 11,148 research towards my T-55A, and quite a bit from the boosters as well. 
And that was actually only good enough for a third place, which means the team did pretty well. So that was good. There's the kill lineup. And there's my awards. And that'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.